factors affecting solubility. First is structural effects, like dissolves like. So you need to remember that polar and ionic solutes dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. You've got to have one or both of these on an AP response. Do not put like dissolves like. So will CCL4 dissolve in water or bromine and why? The first thing you need to figure out is if each of those items are polar or nonpolar. So CCL4 is nonpolar, water is polar, and bromine is nonpolar. So the first thing you'd need to put in your response to this question is that first line. So state what each thing is in regard to its polarity. Then you have to say that CCL4 would dissolve in bromine because nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. You would need both of these in order to get full credit on this question. So which of these molecules would be most soluble in water and why? Go ahead and pause the iPod here and restart when you've got your answer. So CCL4 is nonpolar because you have the same thing all the way around. CH3 and H2 is polar since you have different things all the way around. HI is nonpolar because it has an electronegativity difference of 0.4 exactly. And CH4 is nonpolar. So even without the chart, you'd have to guess B because that one for sure is polar, while C could have an electronegativity difference of exactly 0.4, which it did. All right, pressure effects only affect gas. If you increase pressure, you increase solubility. If you look over at the left, in this diagram, there's no gas in the solution. If we increase pressure, then we increase the amount of gas that's dissolved in solution. Henry's law is used to find out how much pressure and concentration are related. So P is the partial pressure of a solute above the solution, C is our concentration, and K is a constant that depends on what gas is being used. Alright, so I'm going to read that problem. Pause the iPod if you need to. We're solving for before. So before the soda is opened, we have 5 atm of pressure over the liquid. And then Henry's law constant for CO2 is 32 liters times atmosphere per mole. And again, this would be different if it was a different substance. So our equation, P equals KC. Pressure is 5 atm. So it's the pressure that we are bottling it at, or the atmospheric pressure. Ks are 32 liters. And we're looking for concentration. Solving it out. We get 0.156 more moles per liter, or molarity. Now, go ahead and pause the iPod and solve for after the soda is opened. Okay, here is after. You should have got 1.25 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. You could have put molarity or moles per liter. 32, notice, is the same because constant didn't change, and our new pressure was 4 times to the negative 4th atmosphere. 
Notice much lower pressure, so much smaller concentration dissolved in the solution. Last is temperature effects. For gases, as you increase temperature, you decrease solubility. So it's an inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. For solids and liquids, if you increase temperature, you increase solubility. So increase temperature, increase solubility. Or decrease temperature, decrease solubility. So it's a direct relationship. Here we have two sodas. One was cold and one is war warm. Notice the cold soda has very few bubbles because the carbon dioxide is staying in solution. While the warm soda has a lot of carbon dioxide coming out of solution because as we increase temperature, you decrease the solubility of the gas in solution. Here we have two pictures. On the right, we have solubility of gases versus temperature. As we increase temperature, notice solubility of the gas goes down. On the left, we have a solubility of a solid, or salts, and as we increase temperature, notice most of them are increasing with the exception of one of the salts. But for the most part, increase temperature, increase solubility. All right, and finally, how will increasing the pressure of a gas affect the solubility of the gas in the solvent? And think about that for a second. Okay, well, it's pressure of a gas, so solubility should increase. So increase one, increase the other. Had that said solid instead of gas, what do you think our answer would have been? the solubility would not have been affected. Remember, pressure only affects gases. All right, last problem. The solubility of a certain compound is 29.3 grams per 100 grams of water. Should be water. How many grams of the solid will dissolve in 87.9 grams of the water? You can set this up using dimensional analysis or a ratio. So I'm going to do it with dimensional analysis, but you could have solved it using a proportion. So 87.9 87 grams of water. And then using the conversion factor that they gave us, we know that for every 100 grams of water, we should be able to dissolve 29.3 grams of our solute. Grams of water cancel out, multiply and divide, and you get 25.8 grams of our solute. Okay, that's all for factors affecting solubility.